We're going to get started today with project number two, um, the graphite portion of the project specifically. You've already done the this preliminary sketch, the same technique that we used for project number one. There's some really good demonstrations or at least some references in the PDF presentation that I have that I've given you for uh, techniques in graphite pencil. So let's go ahead and get started with talking about the transfer drawing. So this is not my contour line drawing, this was my original preliminary sketch, my construction sketch. I got my thumbnail up here at the top and I've got that uh, sketch at about 15 by 18. This is actually probably pushing the envelope a little bit too big. Uh, the overall size of this is 15 by 18, so I'd work a little bit smaller than this um, so that you'll have plenty of room around it for 15 by 18. Graphite's going to take a little bit longer to develop than, um, than charcoal did. So uh, definitely stay within the 15 by 18, but give yourself plenty of room around it for a border. Okay? So that's my preliminary sketch. Then I've got my contour line drawing. I put tracing paper directly right on top of my sketch, taped it down, and did the contour line drawing not just tracing what I had there, but looking at my reference on the screen as well. So now we're going to talk about transferring that drawing to art paper. I've got a piece of tracing paper. It could be white, opaque paper, it doesn't matter, but tracing paper is fairly thin, so uh, it'll transfer pretty easily. I've taped it to the back of my drawing. This would be my contour line drawing that I developed from my sketch. And then I'm using a 2B, let me see, that's 2B, a 2B graphite pencil. And I'm going to put this graphite everywhere. Uh, you want it to be uniformly even everywhere as far as the tone. So I would say something like that is fine. So I'm going across the surface in a different direction. This took about 10 minutes. Um, it's time well spent just to make sure that it, that it transfers well. Uh, again, this is a 2B graphite pencil. Okay. You can also hold it up to the light and make sure that you've covered everything. For this project, I'd suggest a, a good quality paper, like, like a Bristol paper that, that I have here. This is a 19 by 24. You can buy this individually uh, in sheets at the art supply store. You don't necessarily have to buy a whole pad. I use it a lot, so, so I happen to have a, a whole pad. This is a two-ply, heavyweight, 120 pound. This is a vellum surface. It's got a nice tooth to it, nice texture to it. It's going to show up. It's actually not going to show the strokes as easily or, or as, as much, so if you like to do cross-hatching, you might want to go with just a regular surface, smooth surface. Not necessarily a plate surface, but a smooth surface. But I like the vellum for the texture. Okay, so I'll put that in my drawing board. This is the, the vellum. And I'm going to get started on the transfer. So I have the graphite on the back of my drawing. I just want to make sure that I give it plenty of room all the way around. We'll talk about doing a border uh, after. You can do the border now if you want to. It's not a bad idea. Just make sure that you give plenty of room on the sides right now and the top and the bottom so that we can create a nice border. Some people crop their work way too tight on the first project. I don't want you to do that again. So, Okay, so it's taped down. It's ready to go. Um, you can use, you could actually use a different color, a different colored pencil if you wanted to at this point. This is a colored pencil. So uh, I'm going to use that. It's going to show up pretty well. But what you want to do is you want to check your first line, your first mark, just to make sure that it's transferring okay. I taped it across the top in a couple of places. You want to do that rather than tape it all the way around. Tape it securely at the top, and then you can check. And I can see my line really well. Well, it's very light. I don't even know if you can see that. But it's dark enough for me to work with, and, and I can always darken it later. 
Um, you can also use a 4B if you want to. I used a 2B on the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer, keep transferring my drawing, my contour line drawing. And you're not going to transfer any shading. So if there's shading that you develop somehow on your sketch, um, or you see it here, you're not going to transfer any shadow lines. Just contour lines, uh, structural lines, eyes, nose. In this case, he's got a lot of hair, a lot of beard, hair, but no shadow lines. So I finished the contour line transfer, and you can see that the, the drawing's much darker now. I went over it, transferred it with a black Prismacolor pencil. So I'll take that off. I already checked to make sure that I transferred everything, because once you take this off, you'll never get it in the same place. So that's the transfer part, and now I'm ready to start. One thing that I would do before I start, though, is put a border around it and tape it down because you're going to need that tape border to get some nice edges, okay? So do that at the start before you start rendering. So I've got four pencils here I'm going to use. Four, um, I could probably start with H, but I'm going to start with HB. Um, I would suggest that you probably have five pencils, and um, I could actually go a little darker. I have... HB, B, 2B, and 4B, I could go up to 6B. Always start with the lightest pencil. So in this case, it's going to be HB. Uh, you should have enough, if you get a, a big piece of 18 by 24 Bristol paper, you should have enough to, to trim a piece off at the bottom. Yeah. Using it for the value scale is a really good idea. So you're going to start off lightly. Uh, you see we're going to go from light to dark. Don't go from dark to light. That's not a good way to go. Hopefully that's not the way that you're going to do it in your project. Um, it's, it's much safer this way to do it from light to dark. You won't be making constant erasings and trying to change it because you went too dark. You go gradually and it works out pretty well. Gone about halfway across and, and now I'm going in different directions for cross hatching. You want to find the comfortable direction that you can take. You don't want to be going upside down and sideways. So, you know, there's there's probably three or four different directions that you can take. Uh, the idea is that it's not pressing down that's making it harder. It's as you go over, you're hatching in different directions. It starts to fill in the paper surface. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's actually getting a little bit darker every time I go over. But you're going to reach a saturation point, and that saturation point is pretty soon. You know, I, I, uh, I don't want to push down hard, so I'm going to go to the next pencil. My next pencil that I'm going to use is, an a, is a B, because I just use an HB, so the next pencil in the line would be a B. Make sure that you have a nice long point um, that's going to last a long time. If you have those little tiny metal sharpeners that give you a little tiny point, you're going to be constantly sharpening it. So, um, you know, it's a really good idea, even if you use a X-Acto knife or a utility knife. So I'm going to, I'm going to start about maybe, since I'm using four pencils, probably about a quarter of the way, maybe a little bit closer get through the way over, and I'm going to start developing the B. So that would be my second pencil. And I'm going to go farther over than I stopped with the HB. I'm going to take it a little bit farther into the value scale so that I'll at least have some, some value underneath that foundation layer will be there. Okay, So I'm going to do that with my B pencil for a while, and I'll come back. And I'm just about ready to start my 2B, which is the next pencil. So I got my 2B pencil here. So, so far I've, I've done HB, B. I want to start 2B probably around right here. And take it over a little bit farther. And I can see the difference already. And that's the key thing is that you're using the same pressure or lack of pressure, light pressure, yet it really is working. So I've moved out 
just about to the end of the value scale, my value scale with the, with the 2B pencil, my third pencil, and I'm, I still have a, a 4B that I'm going to use on top of it. So I'm, I'm just going back in and getting a, a little bit more of a gradation where I need it. It's my final layer of graphite for this value scale anyway. Your statues are and your skulls are white, so you may not even need to worry about going beyond the 4B. But um, if you need a darker background, or there's a few areas, you can always go to 6B. But I kind of like to start around HB. So I've gone all the way to the end with, um, with my 4B. And I'm wrapping that up going back over it just to get a little bit darker. Uh, the more that you work on the point and the more of a point that you have, the darker it's going to get. But it's probably more comfortable to draw at a slight angle. Uh, in my PDF presentation I talk about taking a sandpaper pad and shaving it down so you get a 45 degree angle. You could do that too. It's not quite as dark as using the point, but it covers more area, so you could try that if you want to too. So as far as the value scale and using it now, and uh, pull the tape off, take a look. Scale. But what I would suggest is to cut it down to a smaller piece, so it's maybe just about this big, and use it put it at the top of your drawing board. Always have it visible so that you can use it and take a look at your reference at the same time. What you can do is even cut, maybe with an X-Acto knife, right along the edge of the value scale and actually hold it directly on, on the picture, on your screen, and see what those values should be. And then you'll know, as long as you've written them down, so that's H, that's HB. So that's B. And that's 2B. And that's 4B. So as long as you know where you got those values from, what you used, that's what you do in your drawing. And it just makes a lot of sense to work that way. So don't just hide this. Don't put it away. I think it was, oh, okay, nice, uh, just an experience. Okay, so I did it. But use it. Okay? All right. Let's get started on your rendering, your drawing.